If you're an established user of Ozone, then you'll appreciate how good it has always been and are intrigued by what is new within Ozone 6. Well, no doubt you can see that the colour scheme has changed. It's a more subtle muted colour scheme that, to my eyes, is a continuation of Isotope's philosophy of making software that enhances productivity, rather than leaving the user searching for a parameter buried within a user interface that emulates an old hardware unit. Perhaps one of the largest improvements in version 6, and has been requested for a while, is Ozone 6 now not only runs as a plugin, but it also runs as a standalone application in its own right too. And not only that, other great news is within the standalone version, you have third party plugin support. By selecting your plugin tab here, you can bring in any of your favorite plugins you've got installed. I'll look at this in further detail later, but for the moment, you can see that at present, I've got these four categories here. So, for example, if I want to add in a particular isotope plugin that isn't part of Ozone, then by selecting it here, then you can see in the column to the right, I can navigate through and choose whatever suits me. Or if you prefer something different, dig your way through the plugins that you have. As I say, we'll look at this further later, but you can see by clicking on here, you'll open up the Ozone 6 Options user interface. This is a floating panel. And it's within here, looking at the ninth tab along, we can set up the VST plugin folders path where our plugins are situated. For the moment though, whilst we're looking at new features, I'll just close this down and flick back over to the Ozone modules tab. Maybe another improvement that will help speed up your workflow is, well, a processed file that you've been working on can now be exported with automatic dither and sample rate conversion. Using the export audio dialog allows you to check in here to enable the dither. And you would simply set up everything else here too, the sample rate and the bit depth. And don't forget also, if you want to activate dither, you'll do it right down in the bottom right hand corner here. And within here, we now gain access to Isotope's Mbit plus dither module. I'll deactivate it for the moment. Also, another great new feature, and will prove invaluable, I'm sure, is the ability to trim an imported file and fade in or fade out as required. There are a few ways of importing an audio file. Coming up to File and dropping down to Import Audio File with a shortcut, Ctrl plus I, is one method. But perhaps the quickest method is to simply click on this plus button here and then navigate to the particular file that you are interested in. And now we see just underneath our first audio tab, the related waveform. Now at the moment, I've only got this one audio file open, as can be seen by the tab just above. But should you need to work on more than one track, then it's perfectly possible and you'll see many tabs running across horizontally. Again, we'll look at this a little bit later. Now if you want to trim what we've got here, come down to the bottom left, left click and drag to the right to trim away the beginning of this audio file. Conversely, dragging at the end there trims away the end section of our file. And fading in or out, well fading out here, left click at the top and there you'll see by dragging to the left this fade out path. The same applies for fading in of course. I'll just return them to where they were and drag out again. So as you can see, this is non-destructive. There is our full waveform once more. So with some imagination, I'm sure you can work out that if you surround a certain area, maybe a chorus, or a verse, or a last chorus, or a middle eight, or whatever it is that you want to focus on, then you can use the trim tool here and then run this resulting area through any of the ozone modules and process just that part. Now, another great little thing that I like, well, you'll notice that once a file is imported, you'll see that ozone intelligently detects what it believes to be natural changes in composition. Underneath the waveform here, you'll see numerous colored identifier blocks. And what Ozone has gone and done, it's analysed the whole file and broken it down into these separate areas that it believes to be an introduction or a verse or a chorus or a middle eight, etc, etc. Thus allowing us to very quickly navigate through and find a particular part of the track. A further version 6 addition is the inclusion of the Dynamic EQ module that's part of Ozone 6 Advanced. Here it is. Once more, I'll talk about this in more detail later. But as you can see, as part of Ozone 6 Advanced, we get this rather brilliant new module. And speaking of the modules, to assist our workflow, we now get the arrangement of processing modules placed horizontally at the foot of the user interface here. 
and from within the available module options here, we simply need to choose which we'd like to utilize in the mastering chain, and then build up here. Maybe after the Dynamic EQ module, I want to add in the Imager module, and possibly a third module would be the Equalizer module. But notice that if you subsequently change your mind how you want them ordered, simply select and reposition. Maybe I want the Equalizer to come before the Imager in the chain, or perhaps on reflection, I'd prefer the Imager to come right at the beginning. As you can see, perfectly fluid in how we move these around, so that we can build up the audio mastering chain that works for our track. By the way, whilst you're doing this, you're analysing or ascertaining what works well for you. You can bypass any of these modules here, or if you prefer on reflection, to remove them from the chain by clicking here. OK, so all three modules now removed, ready for me to reintroduce as I prefer, maybe the Dynamic EQ and the Maximizer. By the way, I'm sure you've noticed that Isotope have worked hard on this improvement within the version 6 completely redesigned user interface. Now you'll notice that visual placement of key features and commonly used features take precedence within the user interface. And you'll notice also that a larger text size has been integrated for many of the parameter readouts. After a long day in the studio, I'm sure your eyes will thank you for having this larger text format. And not only that, next to various parameter sliders are visual icons that intuitively provide an indication of what the adjusted audio will sound like. So with this track, for example, even if we weren't playing it through Ozone 6, the icons that figure around the user interface in various different places not only give us a pop-up to inform us what they do, but the visual icon itself indicates to us what the adjusted audio will sound like. Anyway, I'm going to leave this first look at the new features here so that we can progress and put Ozone 6's various modules through their paces. All the tears she has cried 